in Soviet Russia, sharks watch human week. And yes, this is a Pokemon-wide video, meaning there's inevitably going to be some complaining about where has Wind Waker gone? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a pretty good question. Why do they evolve? At least uh, Shelmet and Carablast have sort of an explanation where Carablast steals Shelmet's armor, but for the rest, why does a Gravel or a Haunter evolve when uh, when traded? What what is the process of that? I, I just never understood it. I, I know that it's to promote um, trading in gameplay terms, but still, Nintendo logic at its finest. And nope, very bad trade. I don't know why you'd be interested in Basculin or Mincino for that matter. So, yeah, screw that. Yes, I do have a Pokedex. How many Pokemon have you found? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm gonna get a reward. What is it? Shell Bell! Oh wow, that is sweet! Pokemon holding a Shell Bell recovers its HP a little bit if, if it inflicts damage during a battle. It uh, recovers HP for one eighth of the damage that you inflict. Have you shown the Pokedex to a professor? That's something that's important that we're going to be taking care of soon. Is that when you reach certain amounts of certain amounts of Pokemon in your Pokedex, uh, Juniper is going to give you a TM for your efforts, and uh, of course I'm not going to go back uh, to uh, New Nuvima Town by foot, because, well, it's so far away, but when I get the ability, to f the ability to fly, I'm definitely going to take advantage of it and go get those TMs. Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem like there's anything interesting going on. For such a big, fancy building, just seems like there are just a bunch of NPCs talking about everything and nothing. <laughs> the entraling, boring. Okay. Hope those uh, those other people have more interesting things to say. And uh, this one talks a lot slower for some reason. Maybe. And, and yes, my uh, my options are set to fast. You know, for text scrolling and all that. So. I really don't know maybe why it doesn't work for that one NPC, but um, whatever. Still nothing too interesting. No, it's just it's just some say a lot of phys uh, philosophical bullshit. Uh, yeah, absolutely nothing in this building. You can skip it if you if you feel like it. Even though it looks all fancy and stuff, you'd think there'd be there would be something interesting inside. But there's not, so let's get out of there. And uh, by the way, I'm just going to check out over here. Oh yeah, there's actually something. Good thing I checked. And it's an Ultra Ball. Now, I believe, where is the gym? Hey, I think it's over there. Yeah, and there's uh, a guy blocking the entrance because, as uh, we know, we cannot enter the gym until we defeat Team Plasma at the Cold Storage first. So, yeah, please come again later, so this is what I'm going to do. And uh, I am going to uh, give that Shell Bell I just acquired. I'm going to give it to Excadrill since uh, Lilligant and Sigilyph already have means of HP recovery. So uh, Excadrill needs it a, a wee bit more. And I'm going to put Sigilyph in the lead uh, to help it catch up a bit in terms of levels. So yeah, other than that, I think that's all for Driftvale City, so we're going to head over to the cold storage. Fun fact about this place, it doesn't exist in Black and White 2 anymore. It's been replaced uh, with uh, the World Fan Service Tournament, but uh, we're going to cover that in an eventual Let's Play of White 2. So yeah, the cold storage, there are some wild Pokémon to be found in the grass here. And there's a one new kind of Pokemon, and, uh, yeah, PP pee -pee up in the trash can, which reminds me... Oh! An Audino! Well, at least I hope it's an Audino, because it would be... It would suck if it would be, if it would be a, an Emolga or something. Nope, it's an Audino, so I'm gonna take... Uh, I'm gonna take the free experience. Thank you very much, game. So, yeah, only one new species to be found here, but it's one of the more notorious ones. For all the wrong reasons. Because I'm talking about Vandalite, you know, the ice cream Pokemon nobody likes. Well, I say nobody likes it, but I said the same thing for a Garboder, and by my count, I was assaulted by every single Garboder fan in the entire universe. 
at least it definitely felt like it because I didn't expect there to be more than a half dozen people who actually like the thing. So, yeah, Vanillite and its evolutions are the other half of the what the fuck were they thinking uh, group for this generation. And, quite frankly, yeah, I know there are probably some people who like it, but those two lines of Garboder and Vanillux... The impression that they leave me with is, you know, a bunch of suits in a, in a meeting room, and they're saying, okay, we need at least 150 new Pokémon in this generation, we only have 140, and we only have a few hours left, so try to think of something, anything, we'll put it in the game. That's what it honestly feels like to me. So, yeah, Vanillux, it's just a freaking ice cream Pokémon, not the most creative thing ever! And as for its capabilities in combat, it's not that much better, if at all. Because we're talking about a Pokémon whose stat spread is sort of all over the place. It's got 110 special attack, but only 79 speed to go along with it. So it doesn't do offense very well because it absolutely needs to set up with auto to uh, auto -tomize. Sorry. So, yeah, it also has... Well, I wouldn't say acceptable defenses, but probably more points than it needs considering it's a, it's a Mono Ice type. And Mono Ice types typically suck at defense no matter how much points you put into them. Just ask Regice, which has 200 freaking special defense, and yet it can't do anything. So, what kind of chance does Vanillux have? So, yeah, Vanillux move pool on top of that is really freaking barren. We're talking about, like, Ice Beam, Hidden Power, and, I guess, Mirror Shot and Flash Cannon if you're into that, but those are Steel Moves. Steel Moves suck, especially when used for coverage purposes. They have no coverage whatsoever, so... Yeah, I can't really imagine anyone using Vanillux on the ground that it gets freaking Flash Cannon! This is awesome! So, yeah, it's just a really bad Pokémon all around, which probably would have been better off never being created. Now, on to another subject of conversation. If you were waiting for the Reshiram event in Conquest, it is now up, and it has been for a couple days, which is weird because I sort of expected it to be uh, released on August 17th for some reason. That was the date I remembered, but, uh, oh well, we got it a few days early, so I don't really mind. Now, there's one thing about uh, the Reshiram event that really sort of irks me. Okay, it's gotta be down there, so let's just talk to this guy. But, uh, oh, I, th I think I know what he's gonna give me. He's gonna give me the Rocky Helmet, which is basically uh, the rough skin ability in uh, item form, where if you get hit by a contact move, the opposing Pokémon is going to lose some HP. Uh, I don't use it personally. I hear that there are some niche use for it, but uh, it's not something I'm exactly thrilled at the idea of using, you know. So, yeah, I was talking about the Reshiram event in Conquest. The problem I have with it is that, you know, Reshiram is given to a Warlord that just plain doesn't need it. Now, I know, I know, there's a damn good reason why Hideyoshi gets Reshiram, and it's because he succeeded Nobunaga as ruler in real life. But, for, in pure gameplay terms, there are a lot of other Warlords that need the help more than Hideyoshi. Because Hideyoshi's other best link, which is Infernape, is already one of the best Pokémon in the entire game. And even if you never got around to using it, if you finished the main story, you still probably know Infernape is a bitch. Because you face an Infernape in the very final battle of the main story, the one where Nobunaga has a Rayquaza, and what this fight basically amounts to, it, it, it's practically a one-on-one -on -one between your Arceus and his Rayquaza, and everything else is just background noise. Sort of, except for Hideyoshi's Infernape, because what happens is that you do not want to cluster your Pokémon together in this fight, because what's going to end up happening is that Nobunaga's Rayquaza is going to move around, activate its Nomad ability, and then it's going to deal significant damage to two or three of your Pokémon. Probably enough to kill them. Dive Ball, but don't really care that much. 
But yeah, and if they survive, then here comes Hideyoshi's freaking Infernape with Fire Spin to hurt four or five of your Pokémon, maybe even your entire team, if it's placed badly enough. So you really want to be careful not to cluster your Pokémon all together, because that Infernape can fuck you up in a fight where it's meant, as I said, as little more than background noise. Anyway, seems like I'm done with the outdoor portion of the cold storage. Nope, there's a, a little spot over to the left, I think. I'm gonna check it out before going in there, but this is the building where uh, Team Plasma hit out. <laughs> yeah, what a bother. Seems like his catchphrase or something. Yeah, let's get this over with. Oh, uh, well, I'm just gonna dilly-dally around some more because uh, I'm the best at doing that. I'm just going to check over if there's... Um, an item up here. Yep, there is one, which is a hard scale. Whoa! This could actually come in handy because uh, there's a move relearner. I think it's in Mr. Alton City that uh, uh, uses those hard scales to teach you uh, moves that you've forgotten. Hmm. This guy has no focus whatsoever. He's supposed to go get Team Plasma, and all he can think about is about what Alder told him back on Route 5. <laughs> what a bother. For some reason, it sort of amuses me when he says that. But, uh, yeah, this is the inside of the cold storage, which means, as you can probably see on the ground, there's frozen ground, which means, of course, ice puzzles! Everyone's favorites, and I don't think there is anything we can do about this for the time being, so let's just carry on. And if I remember correctly, there is... Maybe if I go this way, yep. Uh, there's the Skull TM that's hidden over there in the corner, so if you use a water type on your team, you definitely want to give it to it because it's a very strong move to get through a TM for that point in the game. And it's also got that sexy uh, burn chance. But back to what I was talking about for a second, as I was saying, there are a lot of wa other Warlords that could have used the hand. Like, for example, Oichi, you know? The, the, the girl with the Jigglypuff that you can evolve with uh, into a Wigglytuff if you're lucky enough to run into a wandering merchant like I have. Well, Wigglytuff, it's... Um, people say it's bad, but I personally find it fun to send it right up the gut and hit like four Pokémon at once with the uh, Hyper Voice, and then Lullaby kicks in and puts them all to sleep. That's pretty awesome when that happens, but otherwise, still a fairly weak Pokémon. Uh, so, yeah, such a major character doesn't get a Legendary? What's up with that? At least they could have given her, like, a Latias or something. That would have been pretty cool, and it would have uh, given her a reason to have that Dragon type as well, because she just so happens to be normal Dragon, not just Mono Normal, as you'd expect. But, you know, I guess it could be worse. At least Shingen gets a Legendary, because his Rhyperior, you know, it's just really underwhelming. Anyone who used it knows what I mean. And I know that it was pretty useful for me in the main game, but uh, I, I've, I've been playing Hideyoshi's scenario lately, and I managed to recruit uh, Ujiyasu, and the thing is that Ujiyasu with a Rog and Rolla turns out to be more useful than Shingen with a fully evolved Rhyperior. So, yeah, that's actually pretty freaking sad. Rhyperior just can't do anything that often because of, well, its low mobility and the fact that it can only attack from three squares away. So at least it was given Groudon, which I am nowhere close to getting. But still, it's going, to, it's going to be something interesting to look forward to in the future so that, so that I can use Shingen at his best again. So yeah, looks like we're going to be um, doing another freaking ice puzzle on top of these containers. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm, I gotta do this. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? Oh, I think I got an idea. I gotta do this. Okay, so see you next time for the remainder of the cold storage.